I'll throw out deep inside the witness protection program from Seattle. <laughs> Hopefully the connectivity holds this time. We'll see. Uh, yeah. It's been a series of technology fails here. Oh, you're in Seattle. Anyway. I mean, that's kind of Redmond. That's yeah, whatever. Yesterday's event was interesting. Yep. I have you heard the problem yet? Well, oh well, I was that's not where I was going to head. Is because like in my brain, there were two buckets of announcements yesterday. There was the okay. ARM-based hardware, which is the Windows, mm -hmm. Surface, Qualcomm, all that stuff. That is one bucket. The other bucket is all the AI stuff, aka recall. Mm -hmm. um, one bucket I'm very excited about. The other bucket? Uh... I'm going to guess the one you're not excited about or whatever is that there are going to be these features that require a new PC. Do they? <laughs> that, well, in the sense that if you want to use a feature like BitLocker, you have to get Windows Pro, mm -hmm. even though technically that's a feature that could be implemented elsewhere. So, yeah, there's an, there's another problem though. What's the what's the other problem? That is a problem. Um, there might be exceptions to this. I didn't realize this was happening until too late in the game yesterday. Mm -hmm. But um, these computers are not fanless; they have fans. Oh. And I can't speak to every single device, mm -hmm. but both Surface devices they announced yesterday have mm -hmm. fans and i know that's only one item on the list yeah, of yeah. reason i know and and i know people are going to point out like the macbook pros have fans mm -hmm. you know and i get it but we don't have a range of computers that competes with the entire range of macbook pros we have a computer that they repeatedly compared to the macbook air mm -hmm. i mean dude like a hundred times yeah oh yeah MacBook Air does not have any fans. So I know it's only one of the things, but does this undermine the whole thing? See, this is the problem. I don't know. Despite don't the know fact that I sat and run the, the with these computers thing. for five hours yesterday. No, of course it doesn't. But I mean, I guess the point is like, yeah. is it in, like, depending on the things you value, right? assuming the compatibility is there, the performance, the uh, battery life, et cetera, whatever. Um, does that undermine it to a point where you're suddenly not sure anymore? <laughs> Which is, I think, kind of where I'm at. Yeah. The battery life will be... Uh, yeah, because it was always thin, light, cool, connected Windows 11. And it's potentially not... Well, it's still thin. It's still light, but it's not cool. We don't know what the battery life is, right? They they splashed twenty six hours or twenty two hours up on the screen, but that's all murky. Like I think the battery life is going to be fine. Honestly, yeah. I it's just going to vary by device, by workload, it, you know, by apps. I mean, you your dependence on apps running an emulation will impact it, et cetera, et cetera. But mm -hmm. honestly, I don't think that's going to be a big issue. Um, here here's the thing. I I'm going to publish something this morning about this. Um, your buddy Ryan Shrout is here. Yep. Spent a bunch of time with this guy. And then late last night discovered he has written a report for Microsoft about Surface Laptop. Mm -hmm. And this is, it's about 25, 29 pages, something like that. And he had one of these things and benchmarked it in every way, shape, and form imaginable against its predecessor and the MacBook Air. And it wins across the board it it's it is exactly what everyone wanted it to be mm -hmm. if, if you were I and mean, this is a person you know who is trustworthy yeah uh thorough uh technical and um you know it's correct but it has a fan <laughs> so according to him i'll read from my little summary here that i'm in the process of writing mm -hmm. um uh, using what's what he describes as a 
standard workload. And this is this is based on some kind of a like a benchmark test, mm -hmm. right? Which I take to emulate just normal productivity work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he describes it as incredibly quiet, twenty six point three dBA. Uh, to put that in perspective, a silent study room is rated at 20 dBA, while a soft whisper from five feet away, this is the official <laughs> description of this uh, terminology, mm -hmm. is about 40 dBA. Um, under heavy, consistent load, like I'm, I'm just projecting here, but let's yeah. say rendering video, um, the fans in the Surface laptop get louder, right? 32.2 dBA, um, quieter than its pre uh, predecessor, 33.6 dBA, but not by much. Um, an Intel Core Ultra 7 based MSI Prestige that he also tested noticeably mm -hmm. louder, 39.5 dBA. But, you know, I've done this uh, and the MacBook Air is completely silent. So, um, I guess I, I hate uh, I hate to qualify everything, mm -hmm. but it's going to it's going to be one of those it depends things, you know. Yeah, you ordered one of these, correct? I believe. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I'm, and yeah, within ten seconds of that, I'm saying I could. I was like Surface dot com. Mm -hmm. By the way, they do have a price advantage. I mean, similarly uh, equipped, <laughs> you know, about two hundred bucks less than a MacBook Air. Good. You know, the base configuration for any Core Plus. What? No, Core Plus. It's all these stupid terms now. Yeah. Copilot yeah. Plus PC, right? I know. Don't, please don't get me started. Uh, <laughs> 16 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of uh, SSD. I want to say it was 1199, something like that. Yeah, that sounds about right. The you know. I don't like the name. <laughs> I know it's a dumb thing to get stuck up on. But it looks like it says Copilot plus PC. Like these are two things, not a Copilot plus comma PC. I did. It's I classic know. Microsoft branding. He, uh, during the event where you're just, I'm sitting there with a the laptop just taking notes basically um, on screen, mm -hmm. it looked like one word, like co plus, you know. Yeah. But exactly. when you look at the written materials, it, there's a space, Copilot plus space PC. You know, it's a brand. It's like an Evo PC. A, mm -hmm. Back in the day, we had multimedia PCs, you know. We, have, uh, we had media center PCs, tablet PCs. It's kind of a... And that's kind of the problem. I, I This does feel like actually Media Center and Tablet PC where it started as a discrete thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Special hardware. Mm -hmm. And actually multimedia PCs were the same thing. You had to have like a, an Intel processor with those, what was it, was it MM something, MMX uh, decoding capabilities, right? You had to have a CD drive yeah, or whatever yeah, it was, right? MMX, yes. It took and me then, a second, but yes. No, it's a long, yeah, a long time ago, right? But but these things become PCs over time. Like they just become part, they, they, they merge into the, uh, into the mainstream at mm -hmm. some point. And I, I, I really think it's analogous to that. How many people though are going to sit there and say, mm -hmm. but my computer already has copilot. How many people are going to say, I have an NVIDIA thing that has 467 tops or whatever. And how the frick it does that not qualify? That maybe not many, but you know what? Those people have a point. Mm -hmm. It's not really an MPU. I get it, but come on, you're telling me that a typical gaming PC could not. I, I. So here's the problem. I because a lot of people, this is going to get off on some weird technical tangent, but they're going to argue that they already have something so much more powerful, and and they should. But this is again, this is that hardware thing, like. When you buy a, um, a Windows PC and, and mm -hmm. Windows has this list of set of or features, some of them required require specific hardware, right? For you to do uh, Windows Hello facial recognition, you obviously yeah, have yeah. to have the IR sensor, yeah. yada, yada, yada. You don't just get it. Like, you have to have that in the computer. So the, the, I think the argument here is going to be, well, we wrote this software to target an MPU, not a GPU. Like, that's we're not they're not doing that work. It's kind of artificial, but mm -hmm. they're trying to drive the adoption of these machines. So you can buy this little $1,200 laptop that can run this stuff no problem. And you have a $4,000 gaming PC, which absolutely can handle it. But they're not writing the software to make that work. Why uh, NVIDIA? By the way, I, I really I shouldn't I don't want to go too far here. But NVIDIA and various PC makers, 
uh, Intel obviously yesterday because they had an announcement about their coming chips on yeah. the day of this Qualcomm Love Fest are all actually really upset right now. Oh, I bet. Because, be yeah, yesterday was like this insane pro Microsoft, pro, uh, pro Surface, pro Qualcomm thing. We went to a, uh, a showcase event mm -hmm. where you could see all the computers. And if, you, if, if this room was like 100 square feet or something, it would just make something simple yeah. and small to kind of imagine it. Uh, 80 square feet of it was surface and 20 square feet was all of the other PC makers combined. Think about that for a second. Think about how weird this room looked where it was like, mm -hmm. and, and I, I pointed this out to someone from a PC maker. I'll just put it that way. And there was, they were like, thank you. And it's worse than you think. And I'm like, what do you mean? And they pointed to the end of the room and they said, after our stupid little nook here, there's more surfaces on the other side. It was actually worse than I thought at first. I thought it was like 60, 40. Yeah. It was like 60, 20, 20. <laughs> it's like they got like this stupid and I, they, I heard this from multiple people too. Like Microsoft promised this would be not like this, but if you watch this event uh, and the video is out there, by the way, um, I tweeted it this last night, you know, if you didn't see it, um, these other these PC makers are like an afterthought. Like they were, they put up a slide at the end and throw at a table. They're like, look, some computers. I mean, it was kind of, it was a little, was a little screwed Puck, up. Puck, can you remind me who, you know, what percentage of the market does Surface own? Right. If you were to invert that, <laughs> that's what, if you walked into that room mm. and you just came back from Mars and you said, hey, who do you think is dominating the PC industry right now? I, I guess it's these two computers. I, I, I've never seen anything like this. I, I'm just, I don't know. Dude. Like, I can just... understand why maybe Intel wouldn't have like a big space at this. I can, I can rationalize that in my head. But like HP, Dell, all these guys that sell the bulk of the computers in the, in the, in the PC industry. Brad, right. It's worse than this. This is the thing. You got to understand something. Intel was told not to come. Oh. They, they wanted to be part of this. Yes. Yep. Because a little bit of the messaging is like, hey, we're going to do it with everybody. It's mm. just that their chips aren't here yet, right? AMD and Ryzen, or AMD and uh, Intel are both going to have uh, chipsets that yeah, yeah. exceed or, or equal 40 times, which is the minimum for the, the certification or whatever. Um, but they're not arriving until the fall. We already knew this. Mm -hmm. Intel had felt the need to come out yesterday and just say, don't forget about little us. We're still, you know, they also just kind of, kind of crapped on the whole Qualcomm thing. You realize that Qualcomm had their biggest day yesterday in the sense that I think it's seven or eight, whatever PC, seven or eight hardware makers mm -hmm. announced some couple of dozen or whatever the number is of oh, yeah. devices based on their chips. Biggest number ever. And Intel yesterday announced, oh, by the way, we're going to have three times as many PC makers and probably a hundred times as many models when our stuff comes out, because that's who we are. We're Intel. Like we dominate this industry. Like it was like a real FU too, mm -hmm. but, but it was also like a lashing out of, you know, to Microsoft and Qualcomm a little bit. Right. I mean, they were not really included. I will tell you they from a consumer perspective, <laughs> this is great because while yeah. mom and dad are fighting, right. Intel mm -hmm. is going to have to do something right to try to win the hearts and minds of the consumer. Not really, but you know what I mean. Look, I here's the thing: I the, for the short term, of course, they will dominate in certain areas because the you know graphic, just discrete graphics, like the ability to put a graphics card to computer mm -hmm. and have a gaming PC or workstation, whatever. That, that this is not happening with the Snapdragon stuff right now. But I also know <laughs> that this Core Ultra Two, whatever they call it, the what's it called, uh, Lunar Lake, mm -hmm. is. Uh, Gonna have way worse. For, I'm, I'm, I'm over here, you know, navel gazing about span noise, but I, those things are gonna be like rocket sleds. So we'll see. It's gonna be a while before they catch up in that area, like yeah, in the efficiency the... part, right? The so other, the other. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I don't know. Of the event was, mm -hmm. we could sum it up in just in a recall, which I got to tell you, Paul, I, I, I don't feel it. Yeah. So, yes. Oh my God. See, listen. I, did were you planning on doing a two-hour podcast this morning? Because so, <laughs> let me. 
sitting in the audience, if you, there's a, there were a bunch of weird flashbacks yesterday. Mm -hmm. They they were repeating the kind of Sanofsky from the chipset to the oh you know whatever that yeah. phrase was. Like they they had a version of that, but the the part where they talked about this was like oh my god, this is like Longhorn again. And all I could think about was Ma Apple introducing Mac or uh, yeah Mac OS Tiger, and saying oh our friends at Rendman were over there talking about instant search and file system stuff and they were like we could do this we have like itunes we do this with songs why can't we do it with files mm -hmm. and then he demonstrated steve jobs on stage instant file search again yep. and again and again something we still don't have in windows right so here it is that must have been 20 years ago right you said many hops up on stage and he starts talking about how, well, how why can we search the internet and get stuff instantly we can't search for oh, our own stuff he's... and that oh. was exactly exactly the message 20 years ago so you're all he did was highlight the fact that for 20 years, we haven't made a single step forward in this direction. And now he's like, of course, we don't, we're not files. Like, this isn't about file search anymore. I mean, they're doing kind of, it's not even, it's not about metadata. It, it's literally like using AI to kind of infer information from content that is in multiple silos, right? I, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's reasonable to worry that this won't work. But I also like I met the guy that like is in charge of this or wrote it or designed it or whatever. And he demoed it for me. And mm -hmm. I I mean I have to, you know, like everything else, you have to kind of use it with your own stuff. But honestly, it, it may work. <laughs> and it's it, it may work because of the way AI works, right? You're first of all, you're grounding it in a very finite set of data. Mm -hmm. And you're saying things like like in other words, you worked on a presentation that had a particular slide or something that has a particular color scheme or image in it that you remember and you can't find the damn thing and you say i was working on a slide deck that had a picture of an apple tree or whatever and it's boop because that's the type of thing that ai is actually pretty good at so again i'm not i can't say that it, i can't say definitively that this will work and maybe it depends on you and what you do and all that but could work the problem is going to be the stuff that a lot of us work with stuff that's not like just not right here it's right. it's in the cloud and so th this thing is predicated on local access and uh is private because it doesn't go into the cloud right so recall over time is going to have to adjust to that it's also massive like 50 gigs of tens of gigabytes you gotta, yeah ten yeah, many tens yep not to mention the size of every one of those SLMs. It relies on several mm -hmm. SLMs, which is one of the reasons you're not going to get this stuff on a existing computer in October because a Windows ISO is about four or five gigabytes. Each of those oh, things yeah. could be more than that, each of them. Um, so yeah, that's why that's the 256 gig right there because half of it's going to be SLMs, you know? I don't yeah. know. There's so many questions. I, I'm, I, I, I was hoping just to watch. I mean, and I, I should say most of it was very positive, right? But we mm -hmm. should. I, I know I'm, uh, this is more of the morning after my brain's yes, turning, exactly. trying to. I, uh, the problem is I have so many questions. But they mentioned something called the co the Windows Copilot runtime. Yeah, what was that what? about? What? I went and tried to see if there was any information about this anywhere. There is not. So that okay. tells me that today during the keynote. That's going to be one of about 1117 things that comes up and then there'll be information and we'll see. I, I think, I don't know what I think. Why should I even say what I think? Who knows? They just mentioned it like twice. I don't, they didn't really say what it was. They re-architected the windows kernel. Yeah. They, they sure. really did. They, of... did they? We, we, I don't know. They this is like a new thing. I don't think it is. I mean, I, I look, I, every time you bring windows to a new chipset, which doesn't happen at often these days, you have to optimize it. I think that's part of what it is, but, this is not Windows RT. I mean, I you know, uh, which for all its failings um, was specifically targeted, and by the way, read on fanless silent devices. Uh, oh, how much does an iPad Air cost? Uh, the keyboard. Yeah, the pricing on the um, uh, Surface Pro. Oh, which is a whole other thing, by the way. So they're just calling them Surface Pro <laughs> and Surface Laptop. Oh, uh, yeah. Not, but they're not so but i know but, but yeah they, we've been down this remember, road remember they did the surface pro yeah, 5 it was it was the a surface pro 5 surface pro. 
and they had to backtrack. So help me. Out. Yeah. So they they announced new laptop and pro for business a couple months ago, right? Right. The laptop was ten. Yep. No, sorry. The pro was, the pro 10. was ten. Yeah, yeah. The laptop was seven. So the actual branding on these new devices is that the pro is eleven. <laughs> 11th so they're edition. not calling it Surface Pro 11. They're calling it 11th edition. And then the Surface laptop is still 7, but it's 7th edition or 7th, yes. I guess, 7th edition or something, which is new language. Um, yeah, you know, not a newsflash that Microsoft and branding are uh, not, <laughs> have never met. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't want this to come off as overly negative. No, 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 I, I no, guess like... what I'm really trying to say is that I, it, this raised so many more questions. I thought I was going to walk out of yesterday with such clarity mm-hmm. on Windows and Surface and these new Snapdragon PCs. Like I thought that I, I thought this would be more clear. But like I said, I'll, I'll send you the link after we're done here, and I'll and maybe put it in the show notes or something. So I'll, it will be in an article I have today. But Ryan Trout has written a if you care about this stuff, everyone needs to read this report. It's um, it's very well done. And um, and I think is the, for me, because I know in you too, uh, you know, we know this person, trust them, et cetera. Um, until like, we get our hands on them and use them ourselves. I think this is the, the, the definitive accounting of where this thing lands. And it's it's good. I mean, it's, it's it, this will, whereas it has raised a doubt for me with the fan thing, I think for mo- those people who are, had other issues around performance and all that mm-hmm. stuff, I think will will answer not all the questions because there's still emulation questions, et cetera. But I think we'll um I think we'll make them feel a lot better. Yeah. The hardware looks great. I wish they would have called it Lumia Blue, uh, because that's what it reminded me of, the new blue color. But I think the hardware yeah, looks it good. looks think- good. by the way, in person, that yeah. looks great. I I wouldn't normally get like a colorful computer, you know, because mm-hmm. I'm a fully grown adult male. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm still growing, I guess. Uh, but the, <laughs> the, the color is, is very, it's really nice in, in person. Alternatively, that other, not sandstone, but whatever that color is, yeah, yeah, yeah. that looks horrible in person. It's like orange. Like I, yeah. they used to have a really nice, almost champagne-y kind of a color, yeah. um, sandstone or something, whatever it was. I thought that was really handsome and nice. The new one is it's like it's kind of garish. Um and then you know, black and silver. And by the way, if you want the expense like the um sixty four gigs of RAM and terabyte of storage, you can only get black. It's the only color that has those options. If you can fig- at least in the fifteen inch version, if mm-hmm. you configure surface laptop um for like a platinum or uh, whatever the other colors are, you you're it's sixteen gigs. Like that's where that's all you get. Yeah, it's yeah. the Henry Ford model, right? That's the Microsoft one. Confusion. <laughs> <laughs>